Hey folks, well, would you like to have a way back moment? Several years ago, I did a video showing you how to adjust carburetor idle mixture screws, and that video's gotten a lot of views and a lot of comments on it. It's been a really popular video, and I thank you for watching, and I hope it's uh, enlightened you and taught you something about carburetors. The only thing is that looking back on some of the comments that I get on it is I feel like that I did a pretty good job of showing you the procedure about how to do the adjustment on these carburetor idle mixture screws, but I didn't necessarily do a very good job of explaining why you do it. So I'm going to just do a redo of that video or an update or whatever you want to call it. Maybe a whole new video. You can call it that too. It doesn't matter. But we're going to use a different carburetor and we're going to talk a little bit more about why you're doing this because it's not really, you don't learn much if you know how to do something but you don't understand why you're doing it. You know, anybody can do something if somebody shows them how to do it but if they don't know why then it really doesn't compute. So anyway, let's get on with it. So in front of us is a Holley 2280 two barrel carburetor that I just rebuilt for one of my old vehicles. And like I said, this is a two barrel. If we turn it over on the bottom, look at the bottom, we see that we've got two barrels on it, two Venturi. And also, you'll notice that since it's a two barrel, it's got two idle mixture screws on it. So we've got one here, one here, one for each barrel. So that's because that uh, carburetor, the way a carburetor is designed, it's designed so that it will idle without the throttle blades being very far open. So you have a way to run the engine without having to crack open the throttle blades. And so in that, there's a separate circuit called an idle circuit for each side of the carburetor. In other words, each barrel. So if you've got two barrels, you've got two... Uh, we'll talk more about that in a second, but you two barrel has two idle mixture circuits uh, if you were working on something like this carburetor back here which is a one barrel this one is a an old carburetor model BBS one barrel that goes on a slant six and it's looks like this on the bottom one one barrel one hole and it only has one mixture screw so it's only got one idle circuit so that's how you understand that part of it and if you have a four barrel carburetor Normally, it only idles off the two front barrels. In fact, that's 99% of them. There, I'm not saying there couldn't be one out there that's got four corner idle mixture screws. I think some Hollies may have that, but uh, the carburetors I mess with don't, and you'll probably not often see that, so we're not going to worry about that. All you got to worry about is if you got a two barrel or four barrel, you got two mixture screws to deal with. You got a one barrel, you got one. So, we know now that we have two idle circuits in this carburetor. This one barrel back here has got one because it's a one barrel, one Venturi. So what that does is that the way it's designed is just got a drilled circuit in it in the carburetor that pulls fuel out of the float bowl, which is like a reservoir for the fuel. It's got a float in there. And you know, it really, it's laughable to say it like this, but a carburetor float bowl and float in needle valve, the inlet valve, the operation of it is eerily similar to a toilet. So if you can understand how a toilet works, you can understand how a carburetor float works. So anyway, in this float bowl in here, you've got float that, uh, fuel that's always, you know, a certain level and it has to maintain that or the engine will run out of gas or it'll overflow or whatever. So. The idle circuit pulls fuel out of that and sends it down this passageway. Now this one's got two idle circuits. So it's got like one here and one over here. And then it comes down and it has to pass through the idle mixture screws, which you see, ow, sorry, they're on the front, one here, one here. And you got a tip that comes in. There's a little passageway right here where this tip of this screw comes through on each side and it doesn't look like there's much room in there but there's plenty for that and it just flows fuel out of this so the vacuum signal is strong right under the throttle blade so it's able to pull the fuel out and so that's why that it's able to run at idle so this one 
the same way. If you look at it, and in here comes in right there. It's hard to see, but it's there. So we know now. Hopefully, we have a better understanding of what's going on with this thing, and so we need to understand why we adjust the screws. Why can't we just set them at a preset level, a preset position, and that's it? Well, as simply put, it's because this is not a perfect world, and there there are no preset positions to uh, adjust the mixture screws because uh, every engine is different. Uh, every carburetor is different, you know, the, cl the climate's different, the car or truck's in is different everywhere you're at, so you can't do it that way. Now, some of you may have heard me in the original video say that if you rebuild a carburetor like this one or like that one and you want to get the thing running and do your mixture screw adjustments, then, you know, you got to get it running. So what I do is I always take these screws and take my screwdriver and for my initial, and I pay attention to this, my initial setting, I gently turn them into the seat. So that one is just stopping there. Do not force it because that's, you know, you're going to mess up the idle screw, the tip of it. If you try to, you know, you're not trying to, this thing's not under pressure, you know, it's just, just seat it lightly. And then I count out two and a half turns. So it's very, very simple. Just get your flat blade screw or whatever that's going to fit in there. And I go out one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. Now don't be anal about this and say, oh, is it a little bit this far or is it a little bit this far? Roughly two and a half. Be fine. And do that for every mixture screw you have on this carburetor. If you two barrel, four barrel, you got two of them here and here. So you got a one barrel. You're going to do the same thing with it. I'm not going to do it. I've already, I've already set this one, but into it seats lightly, out two and a half, and that will normally always get it starting. So, and then when it warms up, don't ever, remember, don't ever adjust idle mixture screws with the choke on. The choke has to be totally off. So, if you're looking at it from the side, then, you know, the choke, this one doesn't always like to quiet. There it goes. That's choke closed. That's choke open. It has to be choke open because when your choke's on, that richens the mixture by virtue of limiting the airflow. So, you know, that's going to throw off your mixture, your idle mixture. No point in doing that. So, now then, so we've covered that. We know what's going on. We know why we, uh, we know how we do it. So, more of the understanding about this is that, you know, when you set idle mixture screws, I said in my original video the same thing I'm going to say now. The goal is is to get the idle speed idling the fastest by adjusting these screws in or out. So you go to one, you go to the first one, pick one, doesn't matter which. Or if that's got one on that one barrel, then that's all you're going to deal with. But if you have a two barrel, you have to go back and forth between them. But you're going to run one in a little bit. Or you can go out, doesn't matter. But I always normally just start running them in slowly, and you you listen to the engine. Now, if you have a quiet engine, you may have to do it the other way, which I'm going to show you. That's why I got a vacuum gauge up here. But you're going to uh, run the screw in. The engine is going to slow down. Now, if it speeds up, that means it is probably already was out a little bit too far. So you're just going to run it in and see what it does, and see well, is it slowing down? Is it speeding up? If it slows down, then stop. Just start running it back out to its the engine will start speeding up. If you had a tack, just imagine this speed up, speed up, speed up. Then it's gonna get to a point, it's gonna stop doing anything, and then as you go further out, it's gonna stop start going back down again. So basically you're going from running it in, leans it out because that screw's got a taper on it. It's shaped like this, it goes into that hole, so it's, it's re starts restricting the amount of fuel that can go through there. So uh, you go in, it's lean, you go out, it's rich. So you're, you're trying for each side of it, you're trying to get the happy, the sweet spot between uh, rich and lean on it. That's all you're doing. You don't have to overthink it at all. So uh, you just do that. You do one side and do the other side, go back to this side. You know, do, do each of them a couple times, but there is no, there is no 
you can't say it like this. You can't think of it and say, well, this carburetor operates on two and a half turns in. Or this car this carburetor, it's 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 setting is three two turns out. Yeah, it may be that after you get done adjusting it, but there's there's no they never say that. See back in the day when everybody drove cars with carburetors on them, that was just a routine thing you did when you did a tune up. Or every few months, you know, you just get a screw, get your screwdriver out, and you would just tweak these mixture screws or the single screw, doesn't matter on that carburetor's one, but that's what you did. It's just a, you know, it's just one of those, it's a variable. If you know what a variable is, a variable means something that's not preset. It's not strictly a certain uh, amount, to put it roughly. But the, so these things are basically variable. So now you may say, well, okay, that's good. You've, you've taught me how to do this, but I can't hear this engine. I don't have a tachometer. I don't know what it's doing. There's nobody here. I can't, I can't do anything with it. I can't tell what's going on with it. It sounds like it's speeding up. It sounds like it's slowing down, but I can't. I don't know. The fan's running in front of me. Belts are making noise. I can't hear it. Here's what you do. I have the solution for you. You take yourself, this is quite an old one, but you can go get a vacuum gauge anywhere around you unless you live on the face of the moon then you can get one of these easily but this is a engine vacuum don't mind this over here that's fuel pressure I don't ever use it for that but uh, essentially it's on zero which is atmospheric and then it comes up more vacuum the higher it goes up the scale and you got 25 and you got 30 but uh, what you can do is you're gonna find a manifold vacuum port on your carburetor now in this car carb carb it has one right here. I know for a fact that is not a, a manifold vacuum, that's supported vacuum or timed vacuum for the distributor. You're going to look for a vacuum port that goes, that it's pulling from below the uh, throttle blades right here. So you always want manifold vacuum. Now some people say, well, can you do it on the manifold itself if I've got one of those vacuum trees? You can. It, they can, but it may not be quite as accurate. So what you're going to do is you're going to find a manifold vacuum port. You're going to take your vacuum gauge, take that in your line, you're going to connect it like that, and then you're going to start doing your adjustments. But at the same time, you're going to have this thing set up someplace where you can look at it. And as you adjust these screws in or out, you're going to watch the needle, and the needle's going to start going up, and then it'll come back down. So in other words, what you're going to do is you're going to do the same goal that you had with the idle speed. It's, 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 they are, what's the word I'm looking for? Complementary. The idle speed and the vacuum, the, the vacuum level are going to be perfectly complementary. So when one goes up, the other goes up. When one goes down, the other goes down. So if you can't hear the engine running good enough, you use the vacuum gauge and you can just get it for each side or the single one over on that one barrel. Uh, you're going to go uh, you know you're going to try to get the vacuum needle up as high as it'll go for each side and when you do that you're done just unhook your unhook your uh, vacuum gauge and if you had to disconnect the line and block it then unblock it and reconnect it so that's all you do guys it's very very simple once you do it a while you know <laughs> It's like an instructional manual for something else, seems like. But uh, once you've done it, you know, it's like falling off a log. But it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of course for if you own a carbureted engine, even if you don't do anything else on one of them, you can at least do this. So don't be traumatized by it. Don't be scared to try to adjust this thing. Because once you start learning how to adjust idle mixture and idle speed and chokes and things like that, you're going to be shocked at how easy it is, and you're going to be shocked at how much better your car runs if you have one of these old cars or trucks. So I want to say one last little thing that's sort of like a troubleshooting tip for you, but every now and again you'll, you'll encounter an engine that will not, it may do a couple different things. Uh, it may not respond to the idle mixture screws at all, or one side may not respond. Now, if you have one side responds and one side doesn't, that usually always means that the idle circuit on the non-responsive side 
is plugged with something internally. It's got to be taken apart and cleaned, like with air pressure and, sol and cleaning solution. Solvent. So you're going to have to rebuild the carburetor because you'll know it because one side you can run it in and almost make it stall and run it out and almost make it stall. The other side is be dead. It won't do anything. Now, what happens a lot of the time, if that's going on, then if that thing's plugged up, it's going to run, excuse my language, but it basically is going to idle like shit. I mean, it's not, the engine's going to sound like one, if you got a V8 or a V6, it sounds like one side of it's not even running. And that's because it's probably not running very well, or at least half the cylinders are not running because they're getting no idle mixture. So it's just dead. It's like an electrical circuit that's dead. Well, this is the same way. So you got to take the carburetor off, figure out what's going on with it, clean it out, and go with that. So now you may have that, and you may also have one that does not respond to the idle mixture screws, and it idles too fast. Meaning the screw, what's happening is they've run the idle speed, the, the base idle speed screw in so far that it's idling, but it's idling on the main circuit, and that can happen. That means that it's the throttle blades are cracked open too far to to pull anything out of the idle circuit, and so you got one of a couple of things going to be going on to cause that. Either the carburetor is extremely dirty, and the idle circuits are just totally plugged and shut down. They don't work anymore. There is no idle speed circuit. Uh, functionally anymore either that or sometimes a lot of people don't catch this but if you have the timing turned up too far meaning it's too advanced at idle your base idle base timing then it will uh, speed the engine up at idle so far that you can't you can't do anything with it what happens in that case a lot of times you can just keep back in the idle speed the idle speed so screw out and you can take the thing out, take the idle speed screw out and hold it in your hand, and the engine's still idling, still idling too fast, you know. So I know you're thinking, what the hell? What's, what's going on with that? But take a look. The first thing to check on that is don't blame the carburetor. Blame, uh, check the, the base time, and somebody may have the thing jacked up too far because it will. It'll run. It'll just run away with you. You can't get it to idle down. So uh, once you get the base idle, the base timing, I keep interchanging those, the base timing set correctly, then you'll find that it's probably going to idle just fine. So check into those things. It takes some troubleshooting. Don't don't get frustrated. Don't give up. You know, carburetors, carburetors aren't voodoo. You know, the way I approach carburetors is I fix them and rebuild them. If they don't work right the first time, I just take the thing apart and work on it till it works right. You know, it's really the way I approach anything on a car. Just... Sometimes it takes once, sometimes it takes two or three times to get it right, but, you know, the thing for me is at the end of all this, I want to learn it and know what I'm doing and understand it. So hopefully this is going to be a new and improved video on this idle mixture thing. The other one was kind of rushed, so this will help you learn to do this and understand it and understand what's going on in the carburetor. And hopefully also if you got a problem with it, not island right this will kind of point you in the right direction so again uh, i always encourage comments and questions and i try to help you out as much as possible but please don't just not watch the video and then post me a question and say okay can you tell me how to do this this is i just posted a video how to do it so you got to watch the video because i will not be answering those types of questions thanks guys and gals for watching and i appreciate all of you and we will see you on the next one Bye.